Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hello, puppy parents. Howdy, y'all. Let's give a quick shout out to Becca for it being her birthday month. Woohoo! <laughs> Happy birthday, beautiful baby. Oh my God. <laughs> Sean, thank you. It has been a great month, a wonderful year so far. And today we have a super intriguing episode about sight hounds. And in celebration of these remarkable dogs, we have a couple of very special Insta dogs and an interview with Mary Lou Hecht, the U.S. Director of the International Rescue Organization, Galgos del Sol. I can't wait. But first, what is a sighthound? Okay, sure. So Wikipedia, ah, defi- Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> defines them this way. Sight hounds, also called gaze hounds, are a type of dog that hunt primarily by sight and speed rather than by scent and endurance. It goes on to say these dogs specialize in pursuing prey, keeping it in sight, and overpowering it by their great speed and agility. They're very similar to Jack Russell's that way. Yeah, they are. You're right. They must be able to detect motion quickly so they have keen vision. And sight hounds must be able to capture fast, agile prey such as deer and hares. So they have a very flexible back and long legs for a long stride. They also have a deep chest to support an unusually large heart compared to other dogs anyway. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very similar to Carson. We always say that his sniffer is broken. He's really bad at finding something by smell, but if it's moving, he'll nail it. Yeah, you're right. So common types of sight hounds are greyhounds, the large racing dogs, Italian greyhounds, which are much smaller, Irish wolfhound, whippet, and galgo. And all of these furry factoids will come in handy during our interview in just a few moments. Now we bring you not one, but two Insta Dogs of the Week. We're bringing you sister Italian greyhounds. We have Iggy Adelaide and her baby sister, Iggy Phoebe. (laughs) (laughs) So cute. That's at I-G-G-Y-A-D-E-L-A-I-D-E for Iggy Adelaide and at I-G-G-Y-P-H-O-E-B-E for Iggy Phoebe. So let's take a look at Adelaide first. So her bio reads, world's tiniest howling giraffe. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's really silly. And like we said, she is a big sister to Iggy Phoebe, and she is the daughter of the Iggy parent. So if you haven't checked out the Iggy parents before, please do so. That's at the Iggy parent. Yeah, fellow content creators, awesome people. Absolutely, yeah. So Iggy Adelaide, let's take a look at that cute little face first. Oh my gosh. So first of all, I didn't know much of anything about an Italian greyhound, and they are just the cutest little things They're like ever. like miniature whippets, they look like. Yes. They've got the cutest little faces, kind of like similar markings, if you will, to a Jack Russell, but just a little more slender. And then their whole body is really a little skinny little thing with long legs. It's so cute. First of all, let's start out with their very last post. And it's a little video of both of the sisters under a couch. And it says, when mom and dad can't find you, you hide under the couch on top of the luggage they're using to pack. They're moving to New York City in 10 days. This was posted a couple of days ago. So in a few days, they will be packing up and moving to New York City. So best of luck to you there in your new home and your new city. And all of these pictures are just adorable. These are obviously very playful little puppies. But then they also like to snuggle up, right? Because they're a little cold sometimes. So they've got cute little sweaters and all sorts of things. So Gabe, what's your favorite picture specifically of Iggy Adelaide? Wow, there's so many. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? We just watched the old school Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And when Mike TV gets shrunk down into the tiny size, <laughs> he says, take him to the taffy pulling room so it could stretch him out back to the normal size. It looks like they got a Jack Russell and put him in the taffy pulling machine. And everything is really <laughs> long. The necks <laughs> and it's the true. limbs, they look like a stretched out terrier. 
<laughs> they're adorable. <laughs> I every really time, can't get in that. Every time you look at their face and their ears are back, they look so surprised. <laughs> you know what they look like to me? And take this in the best possible compliment ever because it's so cute. You know the movie The Ice Age? <laughs> and the sloth that's in that. They drew the sloth in a certain way. When you get just the right close-up angle of these little guys' faces and it's mostly nose in the picture and big surprised eyes. <laughs> that reminds me of. Yeah, except for the buck teeth. <laughs> yes, except for the buck teeth. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And what's great about the Iggy parents is that they're much better at social media than we are. They post a lot of videos. <laughs> They're really great at it. Yes. You will be entertained by their posts. You see them in action Mm -hmm. besides these uh, pretty pictures that they take. One of their videos, for example, instead of just them running around the backyard, it says excited for freedom, which just adds a whole nother level of funny to the video. And then it says mom says treat and they come running towards the camera. Oh, they just look like they're having the time of their lives in backyard. Yeah, I like these pictures. There's about three of them. Looks like it was in the fall time. So there's all these pretty leaves on the ground on this green grass. But they're each wearing a sweater. So this is Adelaide and Phoebe. And one of them's in a purple sweater. And y'all, these are like long sleeve, like it's a long sleeve onesie pajama looking thing. And so it's like a turtleneck and it goes down to their feet. (laughs) It's a (laughs) bodysuit. One's in purple, one's in yellow. Those pictures are really cute. And right around there, there's a video that says, when our humans give us pets. And there's Iggy Papa lying down and both dogs are on top of him. Yeah. Carson does that to us every morning. He's already laying next to us in the bed. But once he starts getting pets in the morning, he then comes and sits or lays on top of us to make it easier for us to pet him. Yeah. And I'll also say this. There's a couple of pictures of them dressed up as characters from The Wizard of Oz. And so I'm going to (laughs) guess... (laughs) <laughs> that y'all are fans of the Wizard of Oz because, oh my gosh, they have a lion outfit and a tin man outfit that's just brilliant. That's fantastic. So that's Adelaide. That's Iggy Adelaide. So be sure to check her out. But then let's jump over to Phoebe's page because she's equally as cute. Yeah, she's a, the baby sister. She's a baby sister. <laughs> They also have, uh, which is displayed on Phoebe's page a few times, this bed that looks like a crown, and it's like royal purple. There's several pictures of them sitting in that or sleeping in that, and it's just so cute. Gabe, what's your favorite? This is really cool. They have a side-by-side image where the face is one half when they first got her, I'm assuming, and then six months later, how her nose has gotten really filled out or Mm. like elongated. (laughs) So you can see the age progression. Aww. Oh, here's a video. Greyhound parkour. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, running around. Man, they're so fast. And then when they're the puppy stage, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful coloring and markings. I don't know. I guess it's just me. But growing up uh, where I grew up, you just you see a lot of mixed dogs. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of mutts. You don't see a lot of purebreds. And this is such a unique purebred. All the pictures look like drawings to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like a stylized CGI of a dog. But these are real living creatures. And it's just it's so intriguing to me. the, The look that they have. They're they're just beautiful. And there's another one of Phoebe that I like when she's a little bitty puppy and she's in a box and she's chewing on the edge of it like puppies do. So super cute, y'all. Iggy Adelaide and Iggy Phoebe. Go check out both of their pages. Be sure to follow both and wish them a happy move to New York City. Welcome to America. Hang tight, and we will be right back to hear all about the amazing international dog rescue charity, Galgos del Sol. Eleven-year-old Walter just may die of boredom during the most boring summer ever. While exploring an abandoned garden, Walter discovers a mystical elf world where all dead plants spring to life at his touch. The downtrodden elves think Walter is there to save them with his new life-giving powers. To defeat the wicked Ichabod von Schnathoff before he sucks everyone's joy dry with his never-ending list of rules, Walter will need to use his best power yet, his imagination. In a dying, oppressed world, 
one boy has the power to bring freedom and life. Walter Plume and the Dehydrated Imagination will take you and your middle grade reader on a thrilling journey while igniting the depths of your imagination. Boys the Book says, beautiful imagery leads to spectacular world building in this fantasy that will leave the young reader glued to the pages. Relatable characters add to the magic of the story with never a dull moment. Get your magical fingers on a copy of Walter Plume and the Dehydrated Imagination by Rebecca Lynn Morales, now at Amazon.com. Find out more at WalterPlume.com. Let Walter and his story awaken your beautiful and creative imagination. Joining the Jack Russell Parents podcast today, we have Mary Lou Hecht, the U.S.-based director for the incredible international dog charity Goggles del Sol. Hello, Mary Lou. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, Jack Russell Parents. How has your new year been so far? Regarding Galgos del Sol, it's been challenging because of the new COVID variation. Mm. So we had to put a hold on to our international volunteer program, which is something we depend upon a great deal for working with the dogs. So that's been tough. Absolutely. We have our first transport in about two weeks with one of our volunteers who's going to fly over, spend the night in Madrid, get a test, because now you have to have a test in order to return to the States, even if you're vaccinated and boosted. Oh, wow. And GDS will meet her at the airport with six dogs and she'll fly them into Boston to our to their new families. Oh, wow. That's lovely. That's so incredible. And it's a great setup for our first question about really understanding what you all do at Galgo Still Soul. So would you mind just explaining that to our audience and giving us a little background? Sure. Galgo Still Soul was founded by Tina Solera, who is our president. She and her family moved from the UK Bath area in 2010. They had two, two little kids. Tina and her husband, Jamie, are very athletic, and they wanted to bring their kids up in a better climate for outdoor sports. Oh, yeah. Tina was always an animal lover. They didn't have any dogs, and she would be driving around. She would see these skinny, deep-chested, long-tailed, needle-nosed dogs just skirting around the highways. And she'd call the police Mm -hmm. and say, you know, there's a dog in the road. And they'd say, oh, don't worry. (sighs) She started rescuing them. Next thing you know, she had way too many in her house, then some (laughs) in her car, and she'd spend the night in the car with them. There was just such a problem, and she just couldn't believe that no one was taking this more to heart. And she found out that these dogs are called galgos or pedencos. Galgos are sighthounds used for recreational rabbit hunting season in Spain. Mm -hmm. They're typically kept in very large packs in outbuildings. They aren't considered pets. They're they're tools. They're hunting tools. Wow. They're kept in these outbuildings that are hot in the summer and blisteringly cold in the winter. And then they're taken out in vehicles and maybe 10 to 20 dogs wow. to hunt hares recreationally or competitively. And at the end of hunting season, which is February 1st, Dia del Galgo, if they're just too many or the dogs are poor hunters, They abandon them or they drop them off at kill centers or they dispose of them themselves. That's terrible. Hanging used to be preferred. Oh, my goodness. That apparently is not as prevalent anymore because finally the word has kind of gotten out. Pedencos are the other dogs that Galgo del Sol has, which look like Ibiz and Hounds or Ibiz and Hounds are the the U.S. breed. Mm -hmm. They come in very small to very tall, white and furry for hunting boars. Yeah. They are multi-sensory hounds. They're kind of the closers in a hunt. They'll go up the tree. They'll dig down. They'll go through. Their ears, their eyes, their nose are always going at all times. Wow. Hmm. So once Tina started rescuing these dogs, she realized that it wasn't viable to keep them in her car and her home. And she met up with a couple who had some little bit of some outbuildings and some land and she started renting that. And after some time, she was able to become a charity in Spain. And one step after another from a living in a finca with all the dogs to renting a larger space and finally buying land with absolutely nothing on it in the middle of 
agricultural fields. We now are a huge facility with over 250 dogs with an education center. Wow. We have a full functional vet clinic with a daily vet. Oh, wow. We have sensory gardens, lots of exercise areas so the dogs can just get out and snuffle. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thriving little village. <laughs> That's, That's great. I love stories like that where it starts with just somebody seeing this need and taking the first step and doing something about it. And then it just grows from there. That's really awesome. Very inspirational. And Tina will never turn away an animal in need. We've had sheep. <laughs> <laughs> if she sees an animal in need, she'll just figure it out. Actually, we've had a couple of sheep that are now in, in a proper animal sanctuary for sheep. Oh, that's great. We've had a pig. <laughs> <laughs> nope. She doesn't see any obstacle. That's wonderful. So how did you, Mary Lou, become involved with Goggles Still Soul? In a very serendipitous way, I was doing some volunteer work in the Elephant Sanctuary in Thailand. Hmm. And I'm a, at the time, I had a graphic design business and web business in Philadelphia. And my daughter and I went to volunteer at the Elephant Sanctuary. We fell in love with the street dogs. We adopted one. Hmm. In fact, connected with a woman in France who had a dog that looked very similar to my Thai dog. And she had what I thought was a greyhound. And she said, this is a galgo. So I've never heard of that. She said, you need to find out what's going on in Spain. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I found out, I started researching. This is kind of the early days of social media. And it was hard to connect with anyone. And finally, someone who was bringing over dogs connected me to Tina. Oh, wow. And my son and I went over and we were her first U.S. visitor. And of course, we adopted one, Orlando. Uh -huh. She needed a website and a logo. And I started working with her. And then it just kept going. And I resigned from my my design practice. And now I do it all. Uh, the website, photography, merchandise, adoption, bookkeeping, all of it. Wow, that's great. <laughs> we have a couple of great volunteers who help us with our sponsorship program and transport. So that's been amazing. But we're, we are a small group in the U.S. Yeah. Wow. I love that that's how it began for you is adopting a dog yourself. Uh, so you have that firsthand perspective when somebody else is going to come in and do the same thing. Right. So that's perfect. Yes. And I do a lot of the transports and every time something goes wrong. So mm. I, I go in with, with low expectations, which are usually met. <laughs> 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 Anything international is oh, just very complicated and more so now than ever. More and more. So aside from that, what is your favorite memory so far while working with Galgo Stelsel? I was talking to my husband about this and um, there are just so many. I think meeting the Galgos for the first time and meeting these dogs live and Tina, of course, who I have such admiration for was wonderful. Catching dogs on the street is rewarding. Seeing dogs that have come in sick, scared, mangy, ribs, open sores, and then going back a couple of months later and seeing them as full, thriving, running around, goofy, silly, healed hounds is wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Things have been happening so quickly there. The progress in just a few years from these acres of dusty red sand to this thriving institution is remarkable. Yeah. And every time Tina would say, okay, next up, we're going to put paving here, here, and there. And I would think, oh my God, how are we going to do that? Well, it's done. I haven't seen that's my next trip to see that. <laughs> well, lovely. So I was uh, going around your Instagram this morning <laughs> and I see that you have dogs. Obviously we've already mentioned one so far. So tell us about your puppy motherhood. We had a series of standard poodles yeah. who were wonderful dogs, and we had to rescue one, and then that was really a challenge. <laughs> that was our first rescue dog. Then we got our little Thai girl who, I mean, Tina always described her as being like an angry woman in a dog's body trying to get out. <laughs> she <laughs> was really rough, so that was our second rescue experience. And then we got our Lando from Tina, who is a big-eared, brindle, galgo, Padenko cross, and he's a dream. Aww. The first day that we got him and brought him home, my son and I went over to get him, and he sat on the couch next to my husband and wrapped himself around my husband's neck like a swan, and that was all <laughs> over. <Aww. laughs> but sight hounds are, you know, they're funny dogs. They're a little 
recalcitrant. You know, mm-hmm. they have their own agenda. Yeah. <laughs> we don't let them off lead. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> but very goofy, silly, cartoony dogs. Yeah. Funny personalities. And they remind me a lot of our poodles, you know, and obviously athletic. Mm-hmm. They're just the best. Very much Velcro dogs. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I like that saying. They kind of sound like Jack Russell's. <laughs> they do in this a lot of that silliness. Yeah, athletic, and... silly, Velcro-y. Yes. <laughs> Stubborn. Stubborn. Oh, yes. Yes. It's amazing a dog could be so Velcro-y and yet so I'm doing my own thing at the same time. I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. And it's surprising with these dogs who some of them have been handed in by their galgaros their their hunters mm-hmm. and which is great and yeah. instead of dumping them and some of them i mean tina has we have someone on staff who's out every day doing rescues wow as soon as there's a sighting and marie jose will go hours and and when tina can do it she'll be there too and they've learned a lot over the years of course and we have a huge trap now with an electronic closure and these dogs are starving so they'll set up a trail of food and eventually but it could take hours Mm. it could take days until a dog has a routine Mm -hmm. wow so they've been chased and treated badly and people have thrown things at them and some come in with also pellet holes in their body for people shooting at them with pellet guns Mm. and once they make a connection with a person that's their person and they bond yeah. Wow. So it's almost as though they've been bred to be really responsive to humans. Which sense. which is crazy, right? Because that's how the they're bred and they have such deep connection and then they get put in this situation where they're cast out. Right. It is. And some are ready to be like, hey, I'm over here. Don't worry about the trap. Take me. And others are just so scared. Yeah. And clever. You know, they'll figure out, okay, this is a trap. The door's going to close. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine them like shoving a stick so the door can't close so they can go in and get the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they- right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I say to people that now that the tracks are closing in the States for the Greyhounds, people want galgos because they look so similar yeah i'll say you have to be prepared if you put up a baby gate Mm. the galgos will take it apart and you'll never be able to put it back together again they'll be on your counter when you come down in the morning yeah checking (laughs) things out i mean they just they they learn to open doors in car door handles i mean you have to really pay attention to them wow Wow. (laughs) that's incredible (laughs) and they're opportunists yeah opportunists i can see that yeah It's so interesting to hear all about what you're doing, what the organization's doing about these fun dogs. What's the best way for anyone to get connected with you and Gal Ghost Del Sol to donate or support or volunteer? Well, all the information is on our website, Mm -hmm. galghostdelsol.org. We're very active on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all of it. Perfect. I do want to just add that we also have an educational program. This has been a huge goal for Tina to bring kids into the center or some dogs into the schools to teach them about animal husbandry and the tradition of hunting and how it's changed. And these dogs are the national dogs of Spain. They should be a point of pride. Yeah. Many of their, their parents are hunters. So just, you know, we have to hope for the, the next generation will see things differently. We talk often about how dogs, just like people, they feel like they need a purpose. They need a job. They're really good hunters. So marrying that with a more modern take of respecting animals and caring for them, Mm -hmm. it's an interesting dynamic. And it's really cool to hear that y'all are are finding a good balance there. We have to, because otherwise... It'll just go on. It'll just continue. And I think it's made a difference, at least Mm -hmm. where GDS is located. When I visit, I see much less of these dogs on the street. Mm -hmm. And Tina's vision is 360 degrees. So she has eyes in the back of her head. So I'm driving with her on the highway. (laughs) She was pull over and say, I just saw Galgo over there. (laughs) She's part Galgo. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Her Patronus is a Galgo. (laughs) Absolutely. But the need is global. The need is still huge. Yes. You know, dogs are still in the States mm-hmm. as well as in the rest of the world. They're so badly treated. And it's just heartbreaking. It's it's I hard. Uh, we've, we've spent some time in Mexico and dogs really there are, are kind of like pigeons. Yeah. They're just out on the street eating garbage and it's they're not 
cherished the way they are here in America. No. It's cool to see that y'all are doing something on the ground level. Yeah. Uh, when you're trying to create empathy, whether it's for other people or for a dog, you can't do so in an aggressive way. It's really about understanding and partnership and little by little by little. And I'm sure you've heard the adage, you you know, you can't change the whole world, but you can change the world for one dog. Or right. right. Some variation of that, which is true, because sometimes you just have to focus on the changes you can make mm-hmm. yourself and hope that what you're doing is expansive. Right. Reaches out and touches other people. Yeah. So our Zoomy round of questioning is a perfect timing. There are simply fun questions to help us get to know you better, and we're going to go through them fast. So you're ready. Okay, so this really is all about me. It is about you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. If you were a puppy, what kind would you be? Oh, I'd be a Pajanko. Because you're silly, cartoony, (laughs) energetic, and... No, um, focused. Ah, I could see (laughs) that. Nothing sillier. Yeah. Right, I'm focused. So what's something that you frequently forget when you leave your house? It depends upon the time of year. (laughs) Keys, gloves, glasses, notes. Oh, my, you know, my list for the grocery store. Yes, always. (laughs) (laughs) I can relate to that. Star Wars or Marvel? Neither. I I had a feeling you were going to say neither. You've got, you're doing some important things. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, Masterpiece Theater. Ah, um, yes. 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 Wonderful. Well, what's your favorite show? Let me go there. <laughs> oh, God, there's so many. And I know this sounds so average, but of course I love Upstairs, Downstairs, Downton Abbey. Uh-huh. You know, any Jane Austen. Yes, us too. Here's a little digression. So Tina's from Bath, and that's where a couple of the Jane Austen books have taken place. And I early on, I said, oh, my God, you're from Bath. And she said, yes. And I said, we must know all about Jane Austen. And she said, maybe I would recognize her if I met her. <laughs> no. And I sent her a picture. And she said, oh. So next time she went home, there's a statue of Jane Austen. She took a picture of her. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's so that's so not Tina's thing at all. Anything about sports? Yeah. Jane Austen? No. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I love all of our differences. So dinner party or tea party? Dinner. Yeah. And what is your go to cuisine? Well, I'm vegan. Oh, okay. Ah. Mm-hmm. I will make kind of a ve- often a vegetable taco mm-hmm. with roasted cauliflower and different salsas. Mm. We have a kitchen at GDS and uh, like traditional Spanish long lunch from like, you know, one to two thirty. Nice. Cool. And a couple of volunteers bring food in and it's no there's no non-vegan foods allowed on site Uh, awesome okay it's amazing to be able to introduce people who have not really enjoyed or known about vegan food to to the gds vegan food and tina's always fantasized about opening a vegan cafe you know in her spare time yeah yeah (laughs) right (laughs) but that's her yeah she'll probably do it (laughs) oh oh no doubt no doubt If she was a Disney character, all the Galgos would be running the restaurant, <laughs> the cooking and yeah, exactly. they would. waitressing. Exactly. <laughs> all right. We have two more very quick questions for you. Zoo or aquarium? Oh, I won't go to either. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> wildlife sanctuary. Yeah. But there are some good ones. You know, I know they have to be done for studies and preservation. And I know there's great working on it. It's just, I just don't enjoy them. Gotcha. Whale watching. You'd like to go whale watching. I would do that, yeah. Uh, Okay. (laughs) All right. And then the last one, trip or staycation? Staycation. Unless it's GDS, but other than that, I I like to be home with my dogs. Okay. That's interesting. That's nice. Yeah, they're beautiful. Scrolling down your Instagram page, they look like a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty dogs. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and learning all about the beautiful and important work that Galgos Del Sol is doing. So thank you for playing a part in bringing animals to safety. Thank you for reaching out to dogs that have long noses and long legs. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) absolutely. You know, like you're not breedist. 
But no. no, we are not. <laughs> we love all dogs. <laughs> we love them all. Sight hounds, from Italian greyhounds to galgos. They are the cutest, sweetest dogs I never knew I wanted. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. (laughs) We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.